Come on, Mr. Salazar. Breathe. That's California air. <laughs> Go east for civilization, Senator. West for air. Something like that. Take it easy, Senator. They work for us. They're here to welcome you. Oh, I'm sorry, Senator. I thought you'd be pleased. Oh, Nick, it's, it's not your fault. You see, there's been a threat. A threat on my life. No more surprises, Mr. Barkley, please. Judd, you shouldn't have. Mother, it's so lovely. She's lovely. Thank you. You know, I was just about to say it's good to be back home. And it's true. I almost feel as though California were mine. Now pour me some of that good California wine. The good California wine we ship back east. <laughs> Well, if you'll excuse me, Senator. Senator! Senators live in Washington, D.C. Here it's Judd. I won't even accept a Mr. Rosa. Just Judd. Judd. Mrs. Barkley, if the Senator's room is ready. Oh, of course. You must be very tired after such a long trip. Me? Tired? Show me a dragon to slay, a mountain to climb. I'll show you a staircase to climb. Or do, would you please show the gentleman to his room? Be a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Salazar, perhaps you'd like to rest before dinner? Uh, perhaps later. Uh, may I speak to you for a moment? Yes. That ranch hand who was just here, what's his name? Oh, uh, Walt Tompkins or Thompson or something like that. I'm afraid something like that isn't good enough. I'd appreciate if you'd find out everything you can about him and about every other worker on the ranch. Well, may I ask why? Please understand. A man like the senator, wherever he goes, whatever he does, the nature of his office, his responsibilities, goes with him. They follow him. But that isn't all that follows him. Personal enemies, threats against his life. There is right now a threat against the senator's life. And we have reason to believe this time there'll be an attempted assassination. Oh, that's difficult to believe. Judd is so revered, so loved. And hated and feared, like all men in positions of power. Think of his life. A gunman, a town tamer, a lawman, United States Marshal. Think of the men that he has caused to be arrested the dozens that have died under his guns. <laughs> Not so easy being a living legend, is it? I advised him against this trip. But he insisted. You're his best friends. He loves you. I think he feels safe with you. I hope and pray he's right, because his life is in your hands. <laughs> Now, if you'll show me to my room. Certainly. Judd, that's enough. Yes, I guess I'm getting a little carried away. Well, I'll just carry enough to heat the coffee. You know, for the first time in years, right here, right now, I feel young again. I'm glad I came, Victoria. I'll second that motion. Salazar and some of my advisors tried to talk me out of it, but I wouldn't be talked. No, sir, I had to get right back here, right where it all began. Get a chance to breathe. 
begin to renew myself. Well, don't expect any sympathy from me, because you never looked better in your whole life. <laughs> well, that's good to hear, even if it's not true. It is true. Well, I'd hate to have to ride out after the Manville gang tonight to prove it. Well, thanks to you, there's no Manville gang to ride after tonight or any other night. You thank me. Heaven knows how many. <coughs> oh, Judd, be careful. <coughs> mm. Ah. If I had choked, my enemies would award you the Medal of Honor, and that chicken bone would be enshrined in the National Archives. <laughs> Did you see him? Yes. The same man, Thompson Tompkins. Well, I couldn't tell not from this distance. Same man. Evening, Walt. Evening. Well, looks like the boys went off and left you all by your lonesome, huh? It's Saturday night. You know how that goes. Uh-huh. You're, uh, quite a loner, aren't you, Walt? Well, that's my privilege now. Yet for a man who likes his privacy, uh, you get around quite a bit, don't you? What's that supposed to mean? Huh? Oh, you got any questions, you far away. I haven't got anything to hide. You were out on the East Range this afternoon, weren't you? Look, you know where I was. I was out collecting strays on the North Ridge. Well, why are you out on the East Range? Did you see the senator or my mother? Look, I told you where... Well, Heath sent me riding back here. I may have cut across the East Range. I don't rightly recall. Walt, I asked you while you were out on the East Range if you saw the senator or my mother. Now, that's a very simple question, isn't it? Well, maybe I did. What does that prove? Nothing. Yes. Down there. Started climbing up, heard me coming, and ran off. So check the bunkhouse, see if anyone's missing. That won't be necessary, Jared. It's that same man, Tompkins. I saw him riding out. At least now we know for sure. We'll leave in the morning. No. He's only one of them. There may be many more. In Washington, we're protected. I say we're staying. No assassin is going to drive me out. We're staying. All right, all right. Ride into town. Make yourself a target for every... All right. Go. But at least let me go with you. No. Nope. I promise you, I won't interfere with your pleasure. Part of my pleasure is to be left alone. Uh, you can't I heard can't... that. Next time, make it in English loud and clear. You're stubborn. I don't know what I'm going to do. That's think. better. Much better. <laughs> Mr. Barkley, are you going into town? Yeah, need a lift? Thank you. Mr. Senator, it seems like you have a ride into town. Thank you, Salazar. All right, Heath, let's go.
take about an hour to load the wagon. Oh, take as long as you like. Longer. I'll manage to amuse myself. Look, pull up a chair or take a walk. I don't like spectators. Not unless they look like Pearl here. I'll consider that an invitation. That's a senator. Jed Ropes. The name of the game is Five Card Stud. The deal's to you. Senator. Table stakes. Wait till I tell my wife. It sure is an honor, sir. It's Sure is. Here, bet. Side straight all day. Looks like you finally filled it, eh, Senator? Shut up and play! Well, I'll see and uh, raise you 50. Give me a refill on this. Yes, Senator. Plenty of time, Senator. Plenty of time. Your little inside straight looking right down the throat of my full house. I know what I'm looking at. I don't look like a full house to me. For that matter, that doesn't look like any straight to me. But, uh... We wouldn't try to bluff each other now, would we? Would we? Dude. <laughs> Dude. You're from the East, aren't you? Are all gamblers from the East called Dude? Look, I'm from Kansas. My name is Frank Keller. It's 50 to you. I know what it is to me. I know what you said is your name. I still say it's dude. Call. 
of whiskey! What's your name? Your name! You talking to me, mister? display I put on back there. Challenging a blind man. Well, you've been under a lot of pressure, Senator. Oh, I guess so. Acting like a fool who sees ghosts all around him. Blind man. It was said of Judd Robeson that he could out ride out, shoot out, fight out, drink any six men north or south of the Mason-Dixon line. I'm not ashamed of what I was, what I did, what I had to do. I'm not ashamed. It's time to put guns aside. There's more important things to do now. I'm a senator. A United States senator. Salazar? Yes, sir. I played poker and lost to a man who says his name is Frank Keller. Yes, sir. What was his name? St. Louis, about 12, 15 years ago. A gambler, dapper, dude, dude. Dude Madden? Madden, that's it. What did he look like? Tall man, big hands, deep set eyes, and, and mouth. Grin, taunting. Suddenly I can see him. I can see him almost like it was yesterday. First thing tomorrow, I'll right into town and have the sheriff check on Keller. You may have some information on him already. Tomorrow morning? First thing. Good night, Senator. Maybe too late. Shut down. Whiskey. Uh, can I buy you a drink, Senator? I'd be proud to. Oh, some other time. Thanks. That uh, gentleman I played cards with this afternoon. Uh, Keller. Keller, yes, of course. Keller, that's what he calls himself. Plays a pretty good game. At least I think he plays a pretty good game, you know. Uh, 
<laughs> <laughs> well, he's played a hand or two in his time, I'll wager. How long has he been hereabouts? Just a few weeks. Any idea where he lives? The hotel, right across the street. You looking to bend another deck with him? Could be. Well, you'll find him ready. You think so? But no so. As a matter of fact, he said, if you want another crack at him, he'll be ready. Anyway, uh, the minute Senator Robeson come in the saloon tonight, I knew there was a shooting in here. How'd you know that? How'd I know? <laughs> I'll tell you how come I knowed. Judge Robeson's the fastest gun I've ever seen. Maybe the fastest gun of his time. I know, because I seen him. I seen him challenged once in Abilene, Kansas. He, uh, Judd, he tried to buy out. But this plump kid wouldn't let up. And I seen this look come into Judge's eye. And I said to myself, that kid's done talked himself to death. Now, 15, 16 years later, tonight, I seen that same look come into Judge's eye. A few minutes later, Frank Keller was dead. Charlie, uh, did you actually see the shooting? You blame right I seen it. I come to the top of them steps, took a peek down the corridor. I seen Frank Keller come out of that door into the corridor. Had his gun in his hand, carried it. He was caught, ready to fire. And Judge, he had to clear his holster first, take aim and then fire. But he did it, you get it? He did it all before Frank Keller got off a shot. Not one shot! It was, it was the most fantastical thing I ever seen. Oh, he's the best. Best there ever was. And I seen him in action twice. Jared, anything you want to ask him? No, I don't think so, Sheriff. Well, that'll be all, Charlie. Yeah. Thank you. Senator? Miss? Pearl Adams. I, I work at Marty's saloon. Kind of, uh, wait tables. I know where you work, miss. Now, what happened tonight as you witnessed it? Well, Frank, uh, I, I mean, Mr. Keller, he invited me up to his room for a drink. There's nothing wrong in that, is there? No. There's nothing to be nervous about, Miss Adams. I know that. It's just that, well, everything happened so fast. I mean, well, there was a knock on the door and then... Frank went out into the hall. Mr. Hodges said Keller came out of the room gun drawn. Gun drawn? Yes, you said earlier that from the way Frank left the room, you just knew that there was going to be trouble. Now, wasn't that because he was carrying a gun? Is that what he said? That, that Frank was carrying a gun? I, I mean, somebody saw Frank carrying a gun? Mm-hmm. Well, then I, I guess that's the way it was. I mean... I was scared. Oh, I was just so scared. One minute we were just sitting there, and the next he was he was lying out there in the hall. I was just so scared. 
I think we understand. All right, thank you. Uh, you can go now, Miss Adams. I'm sorry to have to get you out of bed, Jared, but I felt the need of a good lawyer and a good friend. You qualify on both counts. I don't think you'll be needing a lawyer, Senator. We have an eyewitness account of what happened. Then for the time being, that'll have to suffice. Oh, Mr. Salazar, I can answer a few questions. Not until you've checked with Washington, sir. These matters concern not only you personally, but perhaps the national security. All right, gentlemen, I say this, and it'll have to do for now. Unless Washington absolutely forbids it, there will be a public inquest. Oh, I'm sure that won't be necessary, Senator. I insist on it. After all, my office does not give me the prerogative to go out and shoot people and sweep the facts and the body under a carpet as if neither were of any import. A human being is dead. The American people are entitled to know why. Well, I don't think the sheriff had any intention of sweeping anything under the carpet, Judd. Very well, we're in complete agreement. Right now, and this will be strictly between us gentlemen, I can say with reasonable certainty that Mr. Keller, not his right name, incidentally, was acting for certain people who are opposed to legislation I have recently introduced. You're saying, then, that he was a paid assassin? That's what I'm saying. And in a day or two, I'll be able to prove it. Sir, if somebody's out to kill you, they may have hired more than one man. Oh, they have. Two for certain, Jared, that ranch hand, whatever he calls himself. Walt Tompkins, Sheriff. I'll have one of my deputies right back with you, Senator. Well, thank you, Sheriff. I don't think that'll be necessary. One assassination attempt an evening is all we can expect. I don't believe there'll be any more trouble. Oh, well, good night. And it's been a pleasure meeting you, sir. Well, under the circumstances, I wish I could say the same thing. <laughs> You're a good man. The country needs more like you. Well, thank you, sir. Sheriff, I asked you to check out all people with criminal records. Oh, I have some of that information over in my office, Mr. Salazar. If you'd care to look at it. Thank you very much. I'll see you back at the house, Senator. Night, Jared. Sheriff. Sheriff. It's been quite an evening. That it has. We'll see the sun come up on the way back. The whole thing seems so incredible, doesn't it, Judd? I know it sounds incredible, but in big business, politics, millions of dollars at stake, human lives at stake, wars hanging in the balance, to hire a man to kill a senator is child's play. Judd, if you suspected that Keller was an assassin, wouldn't it have been wiser to warn the sheriff to keep an eye on him? I guess I'm used to doing things myself. Jared, I thought if I could talk to him, sound him out, I might be able to. Well, you know what happened? came out of his room with his gun drawn and... Yeah. Well, we better get back to the house. I think you can use some rest. That's right. I see. Well, uh, may I? Tell me, does the district attorney know about this? The district attorney knows nothing and wants to know even less. Uh, you'll forgive me, but what's that supposed to mean? Oh, come off it, Mr. Barkley. You're the senator's lawyer, his friend. You're part of it. Part of what? Never mind. I have to go. Uh, just a minute, young lady. I ask you a question and I'd like an answer. Part of what? I want you to understand something. I may be the senator's defense attorney, but both the senator and I want nothing but the truth to come out in that court. So if you know anything, anything at all, to either deny or corroborate that defense, I'd Which like to... Which was that Frank had a gun, that he was waiting up there in the dark to ambush the senator, that some people paid him to do the job? What a joke, Mr. Barkley. What a stupid joke. Ask anybody who knows Frank Keller. He never carried a gun, never. Can you prove that? I spent enough time with him that I can prove more than that. Besides, I was there when it happened. Remember, Mr. Barkley? Go on. I, I was in the room. I didn't see a thing. 
You realize I can have the district attorney subpoena you, force you to come back here and testify. Testify to what, Mr. Barkley? That I could see through a closed door into the hall? Testify to what? No matter what I say, it wouldn't matter. People already made up their mind. By the time you and the district attorney finish questioning me, well, about my line of work, whether I ever spent any time in jail, do you think there'd be anybody taking my word? Come on, Mr. Barkley. I'd probably wind up in jail for perjury. I'm sorry, Mr. Barkley. know the whole story, Counselor. In fact, by now, everyone in the entire state knows the whole story. Kind of makes you feel good, doesn't it, Hodges? Getting your name in the newspaper? Yeah. <laughs> Just like being a celebrity. Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, not that I care. I never looked to be in a public eye. Oh, no. But you know what interests me? What you told the sheriff. You said that you could just see there was going to be a killing by the look in Judd's eye. That's right. <laughs> Most men I know would have run away from trouble like that. Not right into the teeth of it. <laughs> a man shoots as straight as Judd Ropes, and not much danger of hitting poor little old me. And besides which, you made darn sure you weren't in a line of fire, right? All uh, right. Ah, Keller's room's around the bend in the corner. Man can hardly get hit standing near the stairway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no hero, that's for sure. Can't get hit. Can't see around that bend, either. What are you driving at? Just this, Hodges. You never saw Keller coming out of his room, and you never saw him holding a gun, either. Do you know why? Because he didn't have one, did he? Did he, Hodges? I promise you a complete investigation of the mineral rights in this area will be undertaken. Well, that's fine. Close it off with a form ending. Thank you for your interest in better government, etc., etc. Oh. Sorry, Jared, but some of these letters have to be taken care of. I understand. That's if I can stay awake that long. You know, your mother took me for a ride today and really put me through my paces. Don't be so sober, Jared. Keller's girl is, by your own admission, a lady of slightly ill repute. That's true. But what about our eyewitness, Hodges? Hodges, I never put much faith in his testimony from the first. He's a publicity seeker. I know the type well. He couldn't possibly have seen Keller's gun. But I saw it. All right, Judd. Let's put aside what Hodges said, what the girl said. How am I to prove that there was a gun? Jared, before the sheriff got there, how many people, guests of the hotel, townspeople, could have picked up that gun? A souvenir, something to leave the grandchildren. That's possible. Let's say for the moment, even probable. It still doesn't change the fact that the girl said Keller never cared. While we're at it, let's get one thing straight. His name was not Keller. I'm afraid it was, Judd. He was checked out thoroughly. He was born Frank Donald Keller, and he died Frank Keller. He was an orphan. And there's no indication that either he or any member of his adopted family ever ran afoul of you in any way. I was sure, absolutely certain, somewhere along the line, that man had a personal grudge against me. His eyes, the way he moved, reminded me of Duke Madden. Right, Salazar? That's right. Bet your life that's right. Now listen to me, Jared Barkley, and listen good. I don't care what you found out with your checking. It wasn't I who did the checking, Judd. It was the district attorney. Well, you tell the district attorney to check his facts again, because I'll bet my intuition against his facts any day in the week and twice on Sunday. And with Salazar on top of the package, well, that, that man can remember whether somebody I arrested in Whitewater, Texas in 1855 had a wart on his nose. 
And if he had one, whether it was on the tip or on the side? Neither. It happened to be in the middle of his forehead. <laughs> I think I'll turn in. Jed, can I see you a minute? Excuse me, Judd. You better get some sleep yourself, Jared. Because tonight it sounded like my lawyer is trying to get me hung. What'd you send for him for? I wanted to see Nick and get my wages. You ran out without waiting to collect those wages. Why? Look, I didn't exactly run. I was run out, Mr. Barkley. What were you doing under the senator's window that night? I was just taking a walk. Just taking a walk, huh? That's right. I was just taking a walk. Look, ask any man in the bunkhouse for a fact I don't sleep good. I never have. So once, maybe twice a night, I get up and walk around a bit. You walk around, all right. Not five minutes after the senator arrived, you walked right into the house to gawk at him. Look, I was sent to get Nick. And as for gawking at him, he's a famous man, a senator, a gunfighter, and you don't see men like him every day. Maybe. But if it's all so innocent, that still doesn't explain why you ran. On Jared and Walt's shoes, taking a walk at night, somebody takes a shot at you, maybe we'd have run, too. Jared in town yesterday, I saw Jed come within one second of shooting down a blind man. Look, Mr. Barkley, when I realized that Judd Robeson was shooting at me, and from the first, he'd been looking at me. Look, I don't know how to explain it. It was like, like he was sizing me up for the kill. you'd like some coffee. If you're working on the senator's case, there's some cold beef. Would you like a sandwich? Jared? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I was a thousand miles away. I brought you some coffee. Thanks. Jared, what's wrong? You've been in here all day, and, and if you don't shave pretty soon... <laughs> you know something, honey? Those pretty blue eyes of yours see a lot more than I thought. Do you want to talk about it? Not just yet. If and when. I may just take you up on that. Thanks for the coffee. Good evening. Excuse me. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Not a bit. Care for some coffee? Mm, thank you. A drink? A drop or two of sherry, if you have it. I think that can be arranged. I hope you haven't been laboring over the impending inquest. As a matter of fact, I was just preparing some notes. Purely academic, but uh, what sort of a case were you preparing? Why academic? We, the senator that has received a telegram from Washington this afternoon. I'm afraid that it's going to be impossible for us to remain here for the proceedings. I see. What you're telling me is that you've simply decided to cancel the inquest. I'm afraid we must, much as it pains the senator to do it. If my memory serves me, Mr. Salazar, it was the senator who asked for the inquest. As a matter of fact, he insisted on it. Mr. Barkley, it was a mockery at best. The facts of the case were public knowledge. The verdict was a foregone conclusion. Was it? Well, you were to be his defense attorney, Mr. Barkley. Surely you know that the killing was justifiable homicide, self-defense. Excellent sherry, Mr. Barkley. Excellent. Thank you. Good night. Well, you're down early. I'm riding into town to see the district attorney. At this hour of the morning, what's wrong? You heard what happened about the inquest? Well, I know Judd's been called back to Washington. Suddenly, unexpectedly called back to Washington. 
and so on, which to his regret forced to cancel the inquest. I'm going to ask the district attorney to insist that he stay and face that inquest. I don't understand. Why? Mother, when Chad asked me to defend him, I had to find out certain things. Things that don't go down easily. What things? Jared, I want to know. What things? All right. I'm convinced that the man sees ghosts. Ghosts out of his past that have come back to kill him. Imaginary enemies all around him. But a man like that does have enemies, real enemies. Maybe. But Frank Keller wasn't one of them. Not nearly. But he thought Keller was an assassin. In Judd's mind, he had a reason. Yes, in his mind, he had a reason. But what if that mind is no longer capable of reason? I hope I'm wrong. But I've got to find out. Good morning. Good morning. My, that coffee smells good. Ah, oh, Jerry, just the man I want to see. If you have a few seconds to give to an old friend, an ex-client. I take it you're not exactly overjoyed that I'm not staying for the inquest. Well, I'm not pleased about it either, but certain things have come up. Matters involving national security. They dictate that I leave for Washington at once, and that's that. But... If you're not satisfied, go to the district attorney. Have him issue a subpoena. Force me to stay. If Washington allows it, I'd thank you. Because, believe me, I have no desire to leave here under the slightest cloud. Even if it's only in your mind, Jared. I'm on my way to see him now, Judd. Good. We'll both hope he gives you satisfaction. If you'll excuse me. Well, Judd, how about some ham and eggs? No. Later. Victoria, what did he say to you? Nothing, nothing you don't already know. He just thinks you should be here for the inquest. Better that the truth comes out, no matter who gets hurt. Oh, it's, it's touching. It's touching your son's sudden, passionate dedication to the truth. Sudden well, maybe, case. maybe not so sudden. I saw it coming from the beginning, his burning desire to defend me. But you wanted an inquest. You insisted on it. Brilliant. Give them credit for that, using Jared, my friend, my lawyer, in such a manner. Diabolical, but brilliant. Victoria, I didn't want to tell you. I didn't want to believe it myself, but I have evidence now, hardcore evidence, Victoria, that Jared is in league against me. Judd, what are you saying? <sighs> Victoria, your face. Oh, sweet, wonderful woman, I was joking. <laughs> I was joking. <laughs> well, now that's settled. You know, I can almost smell that good fresh air in here. That's what I'm going to miss most when I get back to Washington, almost as much as all of you. Maybe a good hard ride. Fill these old lungs. You, uh... Have my ham and eggs waiting for me, will you? Oh, Mr. Senator. Mr. Senator. You can finish packing. I'm going out for some air. Oh, but I... Some fresh air, Mr. Salazar. If you don't mind. Of course not, Mr. Senator. thinking about your little ride into town. Maybe, maybe it's not in the best interest of all parties concerned. I think it is. You're trying to get me hung, boy. We both know that now, don't we? You and your friends. You've been bought out, Jared. They're in the pay of the devil. You and your big business interests, your vested interests. You destroy me rather than see my bill passed into law. I don't want to hurt you, Jared, but you're misguided and so dangerous. To yourself, to me. 
this great country. We're old friends, Judd. You and your fellow assassins. You're in the pay of the devil. No words, no apologies can recall a Judas. Jared, it's too late. I'm not armed, Judd. It won't be as easy with me as it was with Keller. There'll be no witnesses to say I drew first. Oh, Jared. Jared. Why couldn't you have let well enough alone? I swear to you, I never believed it would come to this. I hoped and prayed that his visions, the hallucinations would pass. He was a great man. I don't believe that such a man has fallen. It wasn't easy for me watching him disintegrate before my eyes. What are you going to say to them? Just what you've told me, the truth. What I said to you, Mr. Barkley, and what I'll say to the world are two different things. As far as I'm concerned, he was killed by one of his many enemies, murdered by an unknown assassin. What do we gain by telling the truth? What do we gain by destroying the legend? Perhaps nothing. We have no choice, do we? Mr. Barkley, I spent the best part of my life with him. Being with him, protecting him, it was the meaning of my life. You can't protect him anymore. He's dead. But not his legend. His legend, Mr. Salazar? Is it really that fragile that it can't bear the weight of truth? He was a great man. Do a few wrong moments in a great man's life wash away its entire meaning, everything that he was? I can't believe that. But that's a judgment we'll have to leave to history. I'll have no part in rewriting that history. You've already paid far too high a price to hide the truth. I have never had such pain. Black 
keep telling you, Nick, why don't you go in the dentist and have him yank it out? Well, maybe it don't have to be yanked. Well, then what's it ache for? Well, this bad weather always sits in that bad tool. Well, now, look, we're here. It won't take but a minute to go in and have it yanked out. Toothache medicine. Give me a whiskey. Beer. I ain't got a toothache. They all have the same. How's it feel? Mm. Well, now that the whiskey's got it numb, won't you go have it yanked? You won't feel a thing. <laughs> yeah, you gentlemen look in the prime of life and physical fortitude. Now, how'd you like to earn an easy five dollars? Doing what? Practicing the manly art of self-defense. Test your strength and prove your skill. Jack Kilbane versus Sam Driscoll, the Boston Terrier. There. Which one are you? Well, me neither. Terrence O'Rafferty, manager and trainer of Jack Kilbane, who once stepped into the ring with the immortal John L. Sullivan. Really? Yes, gents. The fight of the century, sponsored by the Stockton Club at $50 a ticket. Jack Kilbane versus Sam Driscoll, bare knuckle, fight to the finish. Oh, it'll be the biggest private boxing match ever held west of the Mississippi. Mark is a queen, but he knows that's no gouging or biting or yeah. kicking, eh? Yeah. Now, are there any men among you that would like to earn five dollars as a sparring partner? And the first man that stays three rounds with Jack Kilbane wins this here gold piece, eh? Oh, now, surely there must be some among you that have done some fighting. You can't all be lacking in the qualities of manhood. There you go, Nick. You get your tooth knocked out, earn five dollars, and save a trip to the dentist. <coughs> Heath, when are you going to learn you're not funny? Oh, he talks. And, and I thought your friend was deep and dumb. No. <laughs> Give me another shot. How about that, Nick Barkley? You're always stomping and throwing your weight around. Well, now, why don't you mind your own business, Jonas? You just happen to be a little bit sore because I fired you off the ranch. Will I do the same thing again if I ever see you put a club to a horse? And don't you ever forget it. Ooh. Now, here's a man offering you a fight. How about it? Oh. <laughs> it, 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 it. <laughs> Didn't want to start no arguments. <laughs> if Stockton doesn't have a man to go three rounds with Jack Kilbane, I'll just keep me gold piece. <laughs> Listen to Sacramento. For some men. Well, I guess it's up to me, Nick. Where'd I sign up? Well, what do you want to do that for? What do you want to fight for? I used to box on the army. What do you get for it? You get your brains knocked in while some Yahoo watches. Well, it might be a shame to turn the man down. People might think there ain't no pride here in Stockton. Pride? Besides the ideal of a Barkley knocking out the great Jack Kilbane, that kind of tickles me. Right here? Mm. Now, wait a minute. Anybody's going to fight in this family, it's going to be me, Nick Barkley. Oh, fine, fine. I'll see you at Brown's Warehouse in 20 minutes. It's gone. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's gone! Now, Nick, I was just having fun. I tricked you into this. Now, let's get out of here. I signed up. Well, they can get somebody else. That guy's nobody to fool with. There we go. There we go. Easy. Well, thank you very much, my friend. But I'm afraid you don't win the five dollars. 
It's three rounds you got to stay. Three. <laughs> That's what. All right, Mr. Barkley, you're next. Now, let, let's see what you can do. Well, uh, he hits pretty hard. I may not be able to be much competition. You wouldn't be trying to back out on me now, would you? I mean, uh, no, no, no. Nick, you don't have to prove anything. Use your head. I can't use my head. Marcus of Greensbury rules you can't butt a man. I can't use my head. Jack Kilbane. Uh, Nick. Nick Barkley. There's my brother Heath. Heath Barkley. Mr. Rafferty, you, you met Heath. Have you ever fight before? Uh, me? Uh, no, well, just uh, army tournament stuff. Nothing too much. Hey, mister. Hmm? I'd like you to try to box Jack. Yes. Make a move at you. Yeah. Well, now, don't be trying to take him out with one punch. Oh, no, no. Oh, that way you may last a few rounds, right. eh? Right. Now, Jack, I'd like you to move around a bit. Hold up on a punch. Make it last a little while. Yeah, sharpen up your timing. You need it, eh? Oh, yeah. That's pretty good punching, cowboy. I get even better. Nick! Nick, that's enough. Now you're gonna come to me. You better get the seat of your pants ready then, cowboy, because you're gonna be sitting down. Come on. Now, isn't that enough? You stay out of this, Heath. Uh, uh. Oh, Kilbane. I'm gonna get you with one of these if it's the last thing I do. Next cowboy? No, thanks. Rafferty, I've had it for one day. I think I've had plenty. I don't know about you. Stockton Cowboys, I'll kill Bay. Take it easy. It, it was a fluke. I know this would happen. I knew it. Those two fights with Sam Driscoll. That pounded bad. Get, get out of the way, will, will no, you? No, take it easy, Jack. Just take it easy. Here we go. I, I gotta finish the fight. He sent you over a lucky one. No, 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 no. I quit. Besides, you you had me out of my feet. No, don't worry about me, cowboy. Just hit my bad side. Turn out the lights for a minute. It'll go away. I don't want to intrude in your business, mister, but I think he better be checked by a doctor. Right. Me? Yeah, you. I've been fighting since I was 15 years old. Oh, watch it. Hey. Get up. Now, we're going down to see Dr. Marar. He's just down the street. Now, I don't want any nose. OK. Now, me, you get back to the ranch. I'll be there as soon as I see he's all right. Right. Doc, I tell you, I can see as good as anything. Oh, well, you just quiet down, stop arguing. Now, follow my hand with your eyes. No, 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 don't. Don't move your head. How much has he been hit on that side? Who knows? Jack's had over 100 fights. Could always take a punch. 
No, I don't know. What do you mean, you don't know, Rafferty? I'm thinking of Sam Driscoll. He could hurt you bad. You never saw the day. Now, let me explain what has happened. A blood clot is very probably formed and is causing pressure there inside your head. Well, how come I feel okay, then? Listen, I could go out there right now and... Shut uh, up! Who's the doctor here, him or you? I know how I feel. If it's a blood clot, there's every chance it'll go away and you'll be as good as ever. I'm telling you this. If you ever fight and get hit there, that blood clot can move, not dissolve. And you'll be dead. <laughs> How do you know? Can you see inside my head? No, Mr. Kilbane, I can't. But I know something about concussion. We'll cancel the fight. Cancel a fight? After I put up the guarantee, every red cent I've got. Jack, it makes no difference. You've got to quit now, right now. Shut up, Rafferty. Quit talking like an old lady. There's a man in San Francisco who knows more about these concussions. Get him. Oh, wait a minute. I got no money to pay for any doctor from San Francisco. I'll pay for it. Get him. In a pig's eye, you will. I pay my own bills. Now, get out of the way. Jack, you've got to listen. Look, I know we're broke, but quitting's better than putting your life on the line. Think of Maddie and Johnny. I'm fighting Sam Driscoll. And you're fighting him alone. I'm taking the next train back to New York. I have no part of you getting yourself killed. OK, Rafferty. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go walk out on me. I don't need you. Well, I bet you're looking at the picture of your paw in there, ain't you? Yeah. <laughs> Is he in? Pop's sleeping. He's oh. in training right now. And Hello. Oh. I'm Mrs. Kilbane. Oh, Mrs. Kilbane. Well, may I speak to you a minute, please? Uh, I'm Nick Barkley. I'm the man responsible for your husband being hurt this afternoon. Hurt? Yes. He didn't tell me anything. Oh, I, I see. Well, uh... Well... Uh. Won't you come in? Yeah. Johnny, I, I want you to take this downstairs and get a newspaper for your father for when he wakes up. All right, Mike. Well, where was he hurt? In the left hand side of his head, where Driscoll hit him before. The doctor says if he fights again, well, well, he could be hurt pretty badly. Oh, dear God. Well, you've got to make him quit. And if you're worried about the guarantee money you put up, there is a way of getting that back, you know. I, my brother's a lawyer, and... I'm not looking for a lawyer, mister. Well, the doctor said you're in no condition to fight. I'm in good enough condition to throw you out of that window. Now get out of here. Jack, honey, you didn't tell me anything about getting hurt. If a doctor told you to quit, then Mary, what? Mary, since we're talking over family business in front of strangers, I'll make you a promise. After I beat Driscoll, I'll quit. Now, you can put Johnny in school like you wanted to, and we'll settle down. But don't ask me to cancel this fight. Now, what good is that going to do if what the doctor says is true, and you get killed? I've had over 140 fights. Nobody's killed me yet. And one lousy punch almost did it today, and it was my lousy punch. And I don't happen to like that. Well, what do you want me to do, crawl on my belly? Ask her brother for a job at a saloon tending bar? You seem to be more worried about yourself and your wife and your son. You take on a lot of nerve, cowboy. Just because you landed one lucky punch. All right. All right. Well, you take a job. That is, if you're not afraid of work. Jack, listen to him, please. We got an empty house on the ranch. You can live there and earn a very decent wage. Oh, I'm not a ranch hand. Well, at least take it until you decide. You don't have to give up anything. You can go on training. Now, ranch work is the greatest builder in the world. Keep it really in shape. Jack, please. If you want to give it up later, you can. Go back to what you want to do. You can go back to fighting. 
But give it a try. Hi, Pop. I brought you the paper. Say, you ought to hear all the people in town talking about you. The way you fought Sailor Haggerty and Sullivan and... I'll, uh... Well, they expect you, huh? Ma'am? What's going on, Pop? for a while, wow. so... Domain, why don't you step up on your horse? We gotta pull some cattle out of the hills, all right? All right. <laughs> Uh, uh, Kilbane. Uh, Kilbane. Kilbane. Oh, oh, oh. You might have a little more luck if you try the other side here. Now, this side over here. Oh. Blacksmith shop, see if he needs some help. I think he does. All right? Uh, right over there. Come on. Get him. Did you a horse? Say I have. There's nothing to it. Tell you what, take this and clean the hoof off and get it ready for trim. Tap him on the nose. Uh, you stand still, Plaster. It's got to be done. It's got to be done. Jack, I should have told you you have to hobble a cow before you milk her. Well, I'm not a milkmaid, Nick Barkley, nor a farmhand. I'm a fighter. No, 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 wait a minute. There's no reason to get upset. Cows are like some fighters, you know. You gotta outwit them. Now, you're not gonna let a cow beat Jack Kildane, now, are you? Not without a good fight. family likes pears. Our trees were loaded this year. Do you know we put up almost a hundred quarts? Oh, that's very kind of you, but I don't have any fruit jars. Let me bring you some. Oh, thank you. We don't need it, Mrs. Barkley. I mean, you've made one small mistake. 
We're not charity cases. Jack, please. Well, I mean, living in this house rent-free is bad enough, but if it's, if it's pears Mary's after, she can wait till after the fight and buy them. Oh, Mr. Kilburn, you don't understand what neighbors mean to each other and what they do for each other in this part of the country, but perhaps you haven't lived out here long enough. Mrs. Barkley, everything my family owns, I earned with ease. I don't owe anybody anything, and I've never taken any handouts. And I'm not about to change. Well, I'm sorry if I offended you. Mary? Mrs. Barkley. Thank you. Jack, how can you be so bullheaded? You better sit down and eat your breakfast, son. You too. You're not going to grow if you don't eat. Not sick, are you? Johnny? What's the matter with you? Pop, how come you hang around here doing ranch work? Are you gonna quit the fight? <laughs> Johnny, that's... Where'd you get such a notion? I rode in town with Mr. Barkley, and some of the people were talking. They said you were going to. Oh, you're all mixed up, son. Well, that's the silliest story I ever heard. Me quit? <laughs> Jack, if you don't tell him, I will. Tell him what? About the doctor. What doctor, Pop? Mary, you don't know what you're talking about. Jack, the doctor said... Mary, he wasn't serious. Only a woman wouldn't know he was joking. Pop, is there something wrong? Oh, no, no. The doctor said something about my head, but he was kidding. As a matter of fact, I'm in such good shape, he was going to put a bet on me himself. Now, you eat your breakfast. Well, I, uh, I guess I better be getting to work. lying to Johnny, to me, to yourself. Mary, there's absolutely nothing wrong with me. Jack, is that the truth? Oh, Jack, don't be wrong. Please. Oh, please don't be wrong. a job loading wagons. What are they paying you? Two bits a day? <laughs> <laughs> Sweeping out barns and milking cows. Finally found your proper calling, eh, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> well, I see you still got the same big mouth, haven't you, Driscoll? Hey, I hear you backing out of the fight. Puts them out of you. Scared? <laughs> Damn, those jobs are so hard to find. Maybe I can put a word in for you. Sweeping out saloons. <laughs> <laughs> we can put your kid out in the street, dancing for pennies. <laughs> Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! There's no money in street fighting. 
Oh, what about it, Kilbane? You're gonna back out? All right, Jack. Come on, I just want to get you riled up now. Come on. Well, that's where you were wrong, Driscoll. You're gonna get all the fights you can stomach. Where's Flaherty, his manager? He had to leave town. <laughs> Come on, everybody! The drinks are on me! Let him go! Lock him up, Come on. Well, we better get our stuff. We're gonna be moving back into town. We got a lot of training to do. You're a liar. You said you weren't hurt. Yet you didn't see the handle of this fork. Matter of fact, you can't see anything from that side now, can you? Get out of here with your tricks, will you? I got a fight to train for. Jack, if there was a chance to get out of this, would you take it? Not a what? Don't play dumb with me. You're not in this thing to win. You're in this to get your guarantee money back. Because you don't have the train fare to send your wife and boy back to New York. I'm fighting because I'm a fighter. All right. If there was a chance to get that guarantee money back, would you take it? Driscoll would see me dead before he'd give me a nickel. Huh? Well, what about widow's money for Mary, in case that uh, blood clot all of a sudden decides to break loose? Get out of here. You've you got nothing to say to me. All right, all right. One way. Get that guarantee money back. Is it someone shows up in that ring, right? Yeah, that's right. All right. I'll fight Sam Driscoll. You? Yeah, me. You don't belong in the same ring with him, cowboy. More than you do. You still got that blind side. Well, just don't worry about me, eh? Come on, come on, get in the buggy, son. Jack, why don't you stay here and train? We can fix up a little place in the barn. Besides, your wife Mary and your son here, they like the house pretty well, don't they? Keep your favors and get out of my way. Now, now, wait a minute. You need a manager, you need someone to train with, and I'll do it for Rafferty's 10%, all right? You? A uh, fight manager? Mm-hmm. Oh, now, come on. I've, I've followed the fight game since I was, well, as small as this one here. And, uh... Oh, well, besides, where else could you find such a great sparring partner, huh? huh? Well? Tying yourself up. Uh, it's fine with me. Soak your hands in salt water? Yeah, Brian, you're thick enough to pickle a hog. One split knuckle would be the end of it, you know. Yeah, don't worry about that. All right, start punching this bag. Make believe it's Driscoll. Keep punching till I tell you to quit. Go ahead. Want a break, stranger? Yeah, I'll break. Never 
thought we'd be going out of the ranching business, did you, Heath? You lose a good foreman, things are bound to go right downhill. I mean, like if he gets interested in other things so that the South Pasture Well doesn't get dug out and the busted fencing stays busted? Yeah. Nine and 15. Very sloppy, but effective. Funny a man raised on a ranch suddenly loses interest in it. Yeah, you'd think managing a ranch would be enough managing for any man. Very funny, boys. So I'm going into the prize fight business. Well, now, don't you think for one minute that I can't handle this ranch, too? And I wouldn't worry too much about Kilbane, either. His doctor is getting him an instrument that uh, can tell whether the blood clot is still there. Nick, we're not worried about the ranch or Kilbane. We're worried about you, Nick. Maybe you're getting in too deep. And if something happens to Kilbane, you're going to blame yourself. Anyway, all we're trying to tell you is that no matter how deep you get, we're in it with you all the way. Well, now, why didn't you say that before? We just did. Step aside. <laughs> Jack. What were you doing? Uh, reflexes. Uh, I was seeing if I was uh, dropping my shoulder or carrying my chin too high. Well, why were you moving your hand in front of your face? Well, I told you, Mary, reflexes. Is that all? Uh, honey, Nick's waiting to take me to the Jack, fight. I don't want you to fight Driscoll. Mary, I told you, it's for you and Johnny. It's the last time. I don't want you taking chances with your life. You tell Nick to call the fight off. Don't ask that. I am asking it. And if you don't, I'm going to take Johnny and go to my sister's in Sacramento. Mary, I... I, I mean it. Mary, I haven't got time to argue. But, but you'll see. I'll take Driscoll inside of five rounds. Jack, you know I love you. Then you'll stay? No. No. Should be back pretty soon. How do you feel? Oh, I feel fine. Well, you couldn't be sharper than right now. Just remember, keep that left up. Protect that blind spot, huh? Well, I won't forget. Tell me something. How smart would you say Driscoll was? Driscoll? Mm-hmm. Well, he's dumber than I am. How do you mean? He'd kick his grandmother upstairs. <laughs> well, now, if he thought you had a cut, a bruise, or a weak spot, would he go after it? Like a shark smelling blood. Huh. Now, uh, where do you think you could take a pounding the best? The rib cage, huh? All right, now let's just give him a target. I got some stuff in the barn I use for horses that'll raise the most convincing black and blue mark you ever saw. You're a smart cowboy. You might even make a fight manager. <laughs> Be right back. those ribs. You show him you're scared of that left side, and he's going to pound you there all day. Oh, Jack was telling me that uh, Driscoll is like a shark, so we figured we'd give him a little bait. <laughs> was this part of the strategy? Uh-huh. Come on, I'll tell you about it on the way.
Mary, how nice. Hello, Mrs. Bogley. Come in. I was just about to have some coffee. Oh, no, thank you. You see, I, I just came to say goodbye. Johnny and I are leaving for Sacramento on the 9 o'clock train. You're leaving before the fight? Oh, uh, yes. Well, can you tell me what's happened? Well, I, I have a sister who lives in Sacramento. Oh, I've been promising to see her. Well, show Johnny off. Oh, she's never seen Johnny. He, he was born in New York. All right, that's not true. I'm leaving Jack. He thinks more of fighting than he does of Johnny and me. Oh, no, Mary, that's not true. It is. Mrs. Barkley, I can't take it anymore. Fighting means more to him than his own life. And I am no good at waiting. Waiting for one good punch from Sam Driscoll or some other fighter. I want to be far away. Well, Mary, distance isn't going to put you far away from him. Why don't you wait until after the fight and have a talk with him and then... No, I've talked. He's made his decision and I've made mine. Mary, it... No, please, Mrs. Barkley. the train station. Looks like she got sense enough to leave a loser. All right, Ben, come to the center. Kill Ben. He's got an injury. There'll be no contest, no fight, and all bets off. Looks much worse than it is. Come on, let's go. What are you trying to do, back out, Kill Bane? Just watch me. Let's take a look. Said it's all right. Come on, let's go. Well, all right. You fellas know the rules of government boxing in this country. I want a good, honest, clean fight. There are no gouging in the eyes, no butting with the head, and no blows beneath the belt line. Any questions? Yeah, he fouled me in Tona Poor Nevada. Are you going to watch that? Anyone commits a foul, she'll be disqualified, and the purse will be forfeited. Now, shake hands, go back to your corners. When the bell rings, come out fighting. Don't try to make any false claims on me. Hey. 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 Gentlemen, this contest is scheduled for 25 three-minute rounds and one-minute rest periods. Under the Marquis of Queensby rules, introducing, in this corner, Jack Kilbane. Yeah. And his opponent, Sam Driscoll. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
Ribs, keep him low. No, 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 that's where he wants it. Get him in the left side of the head. The left side, got it? I'm throwing in the towel. what he needs. To get himself killed, is that what he needs? He'll be dead, and for no other reason than his stubborn pride. Well, what would you do, Mrs. Barkley? I don't know. I don't know if I'd act any different. I just don't know. But I think it's wrong. You see, Mary, if you take away a man's pride, he might as well be dead. Your place is with him, Mary, no matter what. Jack, listen to me. Every time he throws a right at your blind side, he tips it. He steps out and back with his right foot. Now, Heath and I will tell you when to throw your right, because we'll see it coming. All right, now. When we say now, you step back and let go with the right. You got that now. Have you got it? Sure, do you understand that we say, now, you step back and let go with the right. Your fighter's got to answer the bell, mister, do you hear me? Remember that. Now, step back, let go with the right. Go on. I'll give you a bite of these.
glad you came back, Mary. If you hadn't, it all would have meant nothing. I could never leave you, Jack. Johnny and I will always be with you. You know, I've been thinking. As long as a man has some brains left, he ought to be able to use them for something else besides a target. You don't mind if I don't go on a fight for the championship, do you? No. Oh, Jack. I guess I'm just bullheaded, honey. But it was a decision I had to make myself. Well, I've got me some money now. I guess I'll try something else. What, Pop? Well, I don't know. But we'll do all right, son. You ever think about being a farmer? A farmer? Uh-huh. Put about half of that stubbornness of yours into being a farmer, and you might wind up being a very prosperous man. Say, isn't that place down by Frenchman's Creek still available? Sure is. And from what they're asking, it could be quite a bargain. Well, maybe you got something there, cowboy. See you later. See you, Tim. Again. Oh, come on, I'll buy you a beer. Whiskey. I need you, yes, it's true. From the chart to my heart.